Back, and it's time for your wake-up call. Yesterday, I wanted to throw up, and here's why. 98.5, the Sports Hub. The snap, waist high, pressure-free punt, and it's a good one. Forcing Jones to backpedal, right side at the 16. Stabbed left, ran it right, down the sideline, to the 40, to the 50, to the left, left to the 45, beats the punter to the 35-30. Marcus Jones down the middle to the 10, into the end zone. Touchdown! No! I feel like people should get to curse, like, at that point. You know what I mean? Like, when you're calling the game, they could just be able to say, no freaking way. Like, yeah. I just feel like. No, like, trust me, there was plenty of cursing going on <laughs> yeah. uh, yesterday. So, look, the Patriots win the game. They win it on the punt return. It's the first punt return for a touchdown in the entire NFL this season. And, and that's the only play worth showing from a game in which there was no offense, and particularly from the Jets, who in the second half were so backwards, and I mean that almost literally, they had two total yards of offense. But it was the things that were said afterwards from the Jets that were most worth hearing. Give a listen. When you talk about the second half, especially the offense, seven possessions, only two total yards. Um, yeah, it was dog it's not okay. You know I mean, straight up, he's not okay. We had how many how many total yards we had? Hundred, a little over hundred. Yeah, that it's not 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 gonna fly. Do you feel like you let the defense down? No, no. All right, I'm gonna give it. I, I I cede my time to my esteemed colleague who used to coach this team. Go ahead, Rex. Zach Wilson said afterwards, quite definitively, and almost as though he was offended by the question, that he did not feel as though he let his defense down. Yeah, you know what? I mean, this kid doesn't get it. And when you have a bad game, your team loses, all right, as a quarterback and a leader of the team, because that's your position, all right, you always start with I and me, all right? I had a poor game. I got to get better. I got my receivers were open. I've got to deliver the ball to them. And this game is on me. You know what? That's what we see out of Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Didn't we see that out of Josh Allen when mm -hmm. he said, hey, you know what? Hard to win games when your quarterback plays like But he threw like for like poop. 300. Great. You know, yeah. <laughs> right. Way different thing here. Yeah. Kid, grow up. You know what's separating this team? Why this team right now? is? It, are they going to be in the playoffs? Are they not? I don't know. All right? Because this team's very comparable to our 2019 when we went to the playoffs the first time. Mm -hmm. We had a young quarterback also. But the difference is this guy ain't close to Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez took every mm -hmm. arrow known to man, whether he deserved it or not. And by the way, Zach, you did deserve it. Yeah. You stunk up the joint yesterday. And I'm sorry, but this could divide a dang locker room. No doubt. You better step up and be a, a man. Good and time. especially in this city, Greeny. All right? One thing I'll say, I, I got to tell you this story. When I was a young, uh, when I was a kid, my dad was coaching with the Jets. All right. I saw Joe Namath sit back and, and Don Mater was a great receiver, Hall of Fame receiver. But he ends up throwing a pick and it's a pick six. And Joe Namath comes over to the sideline and I saw him talk to Weeb Eubank. Weeb Eubank, he, he's like, dang, Weeb, I just knew Don was going to run the right route. And I'm like, holy cow, at the end of the game, you know what he was saying? It's on me. I misread that for an interception. Wait a second. Don Maynard never read the, uh, ran the route, right. but he took it. And from that point on, I knew what it was like. Joe Namath was a leader, and that's what you have to be. Forget about all this. This kid's a talent. Okay, I'm not worried about the talent. I'm worried about you being a man and, and understanding your responsibility for this football team as a quarterback. So a few weeks ago, after he had a bad game against the Patriots and a very different kind of bad game, that was a game in which he was reckless with the football, yep. threw three interceptions and they lost. You said he needed to grow up. Yesterday was an, it was an implosion of, of epic proportion. I, I don't know how to – for those of you who didn't get to see the game, congratulations. I can't tell you how hideous <laughs> it was. And then the comments sort of clearly refusing to wear it afterwards. What do we say today? Uh, it was pathetic. The comments were pathetic, and they reek of insecurity. I, I wasn't a crazy talented player, but I was taught early on as a quarterback, everything is always on your shoulders. And that builds you up. you got to have – Thick skin to be a starting quarterback at any level, high school, college, or the NFL. Imagine, you know what the reality is? You can point fingers with your words. You don't got to use your fingers. He pointed fingers at everyone else but himself. Imagine having to walk into that locker room after saying that. Dude, I watched the tape, champ. You played like dog trash. Yeah, I don't even know if you know the playbook at times. 
You're throwing it an in route here, and Denzel Mims is throwing it, running a post. Garrett Wilson's freaking out after the play. Your defense gets the ball back. You got a walk-in touchdown up top of the screen to Garrett Wilson. You don't throw it. You don't see it. The reality is this: you got to have thick skin to play that spot. Your post, your 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 pro day throw doesn't matter anymore, dude. Your defense doesn't care that you can flip your hips and launch the ball over your head 70 yards. They need an adult. How are you going to walk into that locker room and, and, and have big, broad shoulders and, and take the blame whether it's you? I have a 10-year-old son who's starting to play quarterback. I tell him two things all the time. You be a great teammate and everything is your fault. Yeah. I don't care. That's how you yeah. endear yourself to your teammates. That's the thing. When you say that, you reek of insecurity. <laughs> I mean, it's, not, it's not about, to me, even the insecurity. And I know this word is harsh. It's about the stupidity. Right, because I'm not I'm not going to say that he's unaware because he's aware enough to know exactly what Rex is talking about. He's aware enough to know what Dan is talking about. And that stupidity comes from arrogance. Right. That, that there's a level of arrogance you have to have when you play this badly and almost dismiss the question that it's a possibility you may have let the defense down mm. or you may have let the team down. Well, anybody can tell you, when you look at the statistics, you were out there, you felt it, you know you didn't play well. You know that this offense didn't do enough. You can look at the scoreboard <laughs> and say, if this is all the points we scored, then we didn't do enough. And that happens and, at times. Right, and it's very easy. It's very easy in that moment when it's laid out for you. That's a layup. That's actually an alley for you to be a good teammate. Right. It's an alley for you to be a great leader. Win You're over supposed teammates. to dump that. You're supposed to say, you know what? Everybody on this team played well enough for us to win this game but me. Yep. If he says that, he walks back into that locker room, and you know what I'm doing as a leader, as a safety? Hey, man, nah, that's not all on you. Yeah. We got to be better. I could have made a play. I could have did something. It's right. not just you. Right. But because he took that bullet, now you've endeared yourself to the locker room. Now when you walk in, I yeah. ain't saying nothing to you right. because obviously you don't need us. Yeah, and especially here. That's what I don't think people understand, all right? The, the media is 10 times what it is at, at most places, all right? And so you're, you're speaking to your locker room anytime you're at that podium. Yep. And, and to your point, when, when we win, when things go well, it's we and us. When things go poorly, never forget it's I and me. And this is absolutely ridiculous. I will say this, that is a crazy stat, all right? The Jet defense gave up one offensive touchdown yeah. in two games, and we're 0-2. Wow. What? All against right? the Patriots. Yes, yeah, against that's crazy. the New England Patriots. Yeah. So, to me, that's I don't where the know. kid needs to step I, up. I, I don't know how it. he wins the locker room back. I don't know. No. I, I, and I'm trying to be – I'm not trying to be hyperbolic. Yeah. I don't know how he wins the locker room back after that because what RC just said is dead real. And, guys, this is why teams miss on this position so much. Because the talent is secondary, and I say it all the time, the talent is secondary. Who are you when it's really good or when it's really bad? Because if you can't figure that out from a guy, I don't care how well you can throw I, the I'm ball. I'm going to tell you how he can still exist in that locker room. Tell me. Robert Sala. Robert Sala has never wavered on saying this is our quarterback. There's The players respect Robert. He's, he's going to get it right. He's got to take this young guy and mold him. This is an opportunity to learn from it, Zach. Don't run from it. The tough spot, it. though, Rex, with, with, where they are as a team, is they're a playoff football team that doesn't have the time to allow their young quarterback to have his growing pains. Mm. They're not the Giants of four years ago, where Daniel Jones was struggling, but the team stunk as well. You know what I'm saying? Right. This is a playoff football team. All right, we'll come back to them as we go. But, but you mentioned the Giants. It's